Good morning! It's Levels Plus Reacts time for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Direct. We've got about uh, 25 minutes until it starts, so I thought I'd record a little intro. Kind of curious what they're going to be talking about. Um, usually Nintendo doesn't do this type of thing so close to a release for a game like this. Um... So it, it's, it's intriguing that they are, um, and, and the fact that it's 20 minutes long. It makes me wonder if there's a bit more to this Direct than just we're going to talk about this game for 20 minutes. It makes you wonder if maybe the Xenoblade Chronicles X port or some Amiibo announcements, the special edition being relaunched <laughs> since it exploded last time. Um... On that latter point, I will be kind of keeping tabs on that during the Direct. I have a feeling that's going to happen. And I would like to try to get the art book. I won't be too upset if I don't, but I'm going to try see what happens. But anyway, uh, we've got a bit of time to wait, so I'll just pause this recording and uh, we'll jump back in when it starts. So, see you in a bit. Alright, here we go. Starting off with the theater setup. Now, as always, when I record these, I don't have sound. So, I won't know anything that's being said. Until after the fact. But we have a whole bunch of mysterious armored people that have shown up on this stage. have purple scars on their face. I'm sure it's very serious, <laughs> but I have no idea. These people didn't have a good day. We each have a lifespan of ten years. We call them terms. Life begins with our first term and ends at the close of our tenth. Victory! And over the course of those ten years, we fight continually. Yeah, this game is is interesting because it's definitely taking elements that I'm familiar with from the first Xenoblade, and there's bits and pieces that I do recognize from two showing up in here as well. I know that wasn't blood, quote-unquote, but it was the closest thing I think I've seen to blood <laughs> in this particular game. I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to have 20 minutes of content in this thing. <laughs> Like, I would understand that trailer. I'm sure the music is fantastic, too. That's like the one bummer is I can't listen to the music. And I haven't been paying super close attention to the Twitter updates that Nintendo's been having on this game. So they've been showing off like locations, a lot of the secondary characters, and all of that as of late. Many have tried, but none have ever managed to escape its flow. 
but I genuinely have just been like, uh, cool. <laughs> So yeah, there's the trailer. We're now in the intro. I just, I, the best thing I could figure is we're going to get into background of story and some more mechanic discussion. That doesn't look like a way to, you want to die. So that's a face. That is straight up a face. Yeah, this is interesting. I wonder how long after, because um, Melia is still alive, so at the very least it couldn't be super long after the first game. And yeah, I'm saying Melia is still alive. We haven't actually seen her face. But it's very strongly implied that she is that character. And receiving a homecoming ceremony in front of their queen is the highest honor. I mean, the hair. <laughs> it sounds like her voice actress. I do like the character designs a lot more in this game than in 2. 2 just had really problematic costuming that they've more or less danced around in this game. I never really liked the way Rex looked either, so that probably didn't really help. The fact that I like these six main characters and what, what they look like and all of that. Is, is making me pretty excited about this game because they look really cool. And we're getting to see a little bit more of, of how they fight right now, which is neat too. Alright, so this is how these six actually meet because they're on opposing sides. And then this guy, who I believe is from Xenoblade 2, shows up and apparently gets them to stop fighting and start working together, is my guess. I'm sure that the tech, the, the, the narrator is telling you what's going on. <laughs> You're just going to have to deal with me making um, suggestions <laughs> on what's going on. I think these designs are great. I thought about this a lot. About what I can achieve. What I'll leave behind. If anything, I especially like um his design quite a bit. I can't quite see his name. My microphone is in the way. <laughs> the truth is, she's terrified. She needs someone. Her design's probably the one I like the least, but I love her hair. I, uh, she's a blade of some kind, I guess. Which explains why she has little fiery hair. So yeah, I will be trying to figure out some alternate costume for her probably as soon as possible. But it's not as bad as Pyra and Mithra in 2. I will say that. And clearly you can wear different bits of costuming. So this world is big, as all Xenoblade worlds tend to be. She's having a problem. Hey, look, there. 
Um. Mimi, look! It's water! There's an oasis! Water! Water! This looks like a possible desert area. Let's just hope it's not a mirage. That was a really cute touch on her ears reacting. Yeah, look at how cool these environments are. One thing I will absolutely give Monolith Soft absolute credit for every time is they are superb world designers. They come up with some of the coolest environments. I still think Xenoblade Chronicles has some of the neatest places to explore, and they do cool things to make them stand out. Like your usual ice world has these neat features that other games just don't even bother to deal with because it's a nice world. Why would it have different stuff? But like, that's the thing I, one of the things that really, I really like about the first game. And since, since we're kind of talking about stuff, the, <clears throat> The biggest nitpick I really have with Xenoblade Chronicles 1 is the party size. And this game basically is letting you have double that amount. And it's clear that these six characters really, really, really matter to the plot. So they're going to constantly all be together. And we're seeing here a lot of the things that are traditional in Xenoblade, but with more features. Like, now, like, we can interact with our party at rest spots. We can cook. Um, which I think is fantastic. Okay, so this system kind of, is kind of back. I forget what it was called. Um, but you can talk about stuff. See, this is great. This is what I was actually really hoping would be in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, because that was one of the things, another one of the things, like, the party interacted a lot, but it didn't have a lot of these, like, calmer, softer moments outside of skits. And it's good to see that they're actually doing a lot more character stuff, because clearly this game, the characters matter. Otherwise, they wouldn't be having you be controlling all six with seventh a seventh optional character rotating in and out all the time the locations you visit are saved as landmarks. and it looks like the exploration is going to be a big part you can you can fast travel or skip travel as they're calling it here that was pretty instantaneous you can look up quest routes which is fantastic that's going to be helpful they did that in xenoblade one but it's good to see that's still here you can change the time like you could in Xenoblade 1. That's really helpful. Because <laughs> if you're trying to hunt specific things or do side quests that have time specific things, that's really helpful. It, but, you know, since I can't hear anything, what I'm seeing is basically what I was hoping to see out of this game. That... The characters get more opportunities to interact and more expansion to basic mechanics to help them interact more. I think I think what I was seeing with the cooking and all of that is, is fantastic. So here's some battle stuff. So you get to play as the six characters. Oh, you have a dodge roll now? That's a big improvement. And all of them are fighting at the same time. And from my understanding, you can easily switch between them. You still have arts. Which looks like it's now a button. Assignment instead of having to scroll through a menu. And then we have two attackers, two defenders, and two healers, I'm going to guess. Yes. 
And I think you're able to switch them to be different things. Looks like the topple mechanic is still here. So yeah, I saw that change. So if you need to switch to someone else, you can do that. Oh, that's cool. The not quite Monado <laughs> disappears when he dodges. Wow, we got some new new status effects. Chain attacks. Oh, you get to pick who you want. And then, ooh, so you actually get like a super move of sorts if you if you can get your tactical points up to a certain level. Yeah, so this is the this is another big change is that unlike the last two games, well, I could even say three games, I would guess there's actually a class system, and apparently our protag has a cybernetic eye. <laughs> So, yeah, able to be other classes. So, if you want to have Noah, for example, be more like another character, you can do that. And you just change them all around, and they can be the different things. So you can basically have the party be what you want. Which I think is a really cool concept. It's just adding more customization to the game. So if you want to, um, you know, have, I think her name's Mio, or Mia, sorry. I can see at the left, I'm just not paying attention. Mio, be the one welding the sword, you can do that. If you want to have Taeon have the gun staff, you can do that. Which I think is great. I think it's a really smart way to give this game even more customization. And I'm sure that the characters are specifically good in their respective class, so it might be the preferred way you want to play them, but ultimately you don't have to. You can switch them around to have them all be different types. That might work well in certain situations. So that was one of the things that they mentioned a little while ago that really got me excited. So you can get different arts, and I bet you can bounce them around between the different classes. Which would be the reason why you would want to do this in the first place, is to diversify your moveset. Because every character would have its own thing. And then you can switch classes on the fly, it looked like. Yeah. I think you might be able. Yeah, you can. I'm seeing. I'm seeing classes change midway through it, combo attacks, which is awesome. It's going to make the combat so much more engaging, and that I think is the biggest improvement I've seen to this is the combat. The fact that you can dodge, the fact that you can switch classes, switch characters, that's all huge to mixing this up. So now we've got our seventh characters. We've been seeing a few of these show up on Twitter lately. Pretty cool. Pretty distinctive designs. Grave residents of Ionios called heroes can lend their arms. Looks like there's a lot. So the interesting thing I wonder is, will, will these characters allow you to incorporate their classes or not? Guardian Commander, 
Turn the tables with boosted abilities when things look dire. In cursor, unleash more critical hits for higher attack power. Because they have unique weapons. Heal party members and bolster them. Actually, I think we might, because that gun is the same one that one of the other characters was using. Yeah, you can mix them up. That makes it even cooler. So you're able to go beyond the six. Super rad. You're going to have them all be the same class. So it seems that costumes are based on the class you are. So it makes me wonder if you can do anything beyond that or not. This will be fun to actually watch with the audio so I can understand what in the world is going on instead of me just making a lot of speculation. So this seems to be our main antagonist. see the the duo system the Ouroboros combination now what we have seen is two specific characters coming together so I yeah it's these two but we haven't seen if all six characters can unite with different characters or if it's only the two that can team up so I'm hoping we might get a little bit of confirmation on that front or not. Finn says hi. He's been a little bit pesky today. He's discovered that there's something in the laundry cabinet. So he keeps trying to get in there when there's no reason for him to be in there. Let's see. Come with me. I'm all set. Despite being a single body, the Ouroboros is controlled by only one of the two characters. Okay, so that's a different looking one. I don't remember it being white. in battle to make the already powerful Ouroboros even stronger. But maybe I'm mistaken. They flew by so fast. Ouroboros can also take part in chain attacks with the rest of the party. So th they do have some unique design color stuff at the very least. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on here. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure it out. But it does seem like the characters at least are locked, but they can change the colors of what they look like depending on the move they're using. Well, we are getting close to our 20 minutes here. I guess they did figure out plenty of ways to make this be approximately 20 minutes long. So now I ain't afraid. Yeah, I'll keep going. While my flame still flickers to the bitter end. I am pretty stoked for this game though. I I everything that I have seen about it just looks really rad. It's still a surprise that it is we have all three of the mainline games here on the Switch. Um, it would be great if we had X show up, but uh, there has been no confirmation about that yet. All right, well, we have an expansion pass. 
with a whole bunch of extra stuff for an additional thirty dollars and i see that we have the monado and pyra's blade so clearly there's some stuff going on there we've got amiibo support whatever that means since i can't hear it so shulk's amiibo is going to be coming back out and that will give you the monado Not too surprising there. And I imagine we maybe will get our Pyra and Mithra amiibo amount. Nope, no announcement on that front. A little surprising. Thank you for watching. And enjoy your adventures in the world of Ionios. But yeah, that's that's the deal. We got a nice panoramic shot and we're done. Alright, well, as of the end of this recording, the special edition has popped back up, and I didn't see anything about it happening. So, uh, I think we're done. Um, I'll watch it again with sound, <laughs> now that it's over. And, uh, I'm pretty hype about this game, not gonna lie. So, uh, we'll check back in when it comes out at the end of July, and, uh, I'll let you know what I think of it. Till next time, my friends, we'll have a Levels Plus Weekly episode tomorrow on Pocking Rocky Reshrined. So uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. Thank you so much for watching this morning. Have a wonderful day.